Welcome to our lecture online. On recommendation of my wife, who actually has dyslexia, it's amazing how she got a degree in mathematics, applied mathematics with dyslexia, but she has these special techniques that she always used to use in order to be able to solve problems like this, which seems relatively easy for some people, but can actually be quite visually confusing for others. There's actually other methods in which we can apply to something like this to perhaps make it easier in case you have dyslexia. So let's try it this way and see what you think. All right, what we're going to do instead is we're going to write them on top of one another, like the five times the square root of three minus the square root of two, multiply times the square root of two plus the square root, oop, I'm missing my four there, plus four times the square root of three. And so now let's try to multiply them together like this. So we take this number right here, or this term right here, multiply it times this one. So four times the negative gives you minus four times the square root of three times two, which gives me a six. Then we multiply these two together. Five times four is 20. And the square root of three times the square root of three, that's equal to three. So we see that's just an integer. Then we multiply these two together, we get minus the square root of two times the square root of two, which is simply minus two. And we put it in this column because again, that product is an integer. And then the square root of two times five times the square root of three, we're going to put that in this column because the result will be the square root of six n times five, so plus five times the square root of six. And so what we've done is put things in particular columns as we multiply them. Now we can go ahead and add them together we have 5 minus 4, which gives us 1 times the square root of 6. We don't have to write the 1. And 20 times 3 is 60, minus 2 would be 58. And so then we simply add them together, or we can say this is equal to the square root of 6 plus 58. I guess it doesn't matter which one we put first and which one we put last. So sometimes putting it in a vertical direction does help see through the problem. Now in the second one, notice that we can do it exactly the same way as before. We can write this as 3 times the square root of x plus the square root of x. And then we're going to multiply that times itself. So 3 times the square root of x plus the square root of x. Now this one looks a little bit different because notice all of them have exactly the square root of x. And when we multiply, the radical will disappear. So here we have the square root of x times the square root of x is simply x plus the square root of x times this would be 3 times the square root of x times the square root of x is simply x, so we don't have to write the square root again, simply x. Multiply these two together, so we get 3 times this times this, that gives us plus 3 times x, and this times this gives us plus 9 times x. So notice that in either case, it doesn't matter what column we put it under, we can simply add them together, so this is 4x plus, that's 12x, and when we add them together, that together gives us 16x. So you can see you can do it exactly the same way. Or, if you like, you can take this one over here and write as 3 times the square root of x plus the square root of x quantity squared, which means using that same technique that we used before, and I'm trying to find a little room so I can show you what we mean by that. If we have a plus b quantity squared, that is equal to the first term squared, plus twice the product of those two, it would be two times a times b, plus the last term squared, b squared. So using that very same technique, we could look at this and say, okay, that's simply the first term squared, which is nine times x, plus the last term squared, plus x, plus twice the product of the two, so this times this gives us three x times two gives us plus six x. And then when we add them all together, again, that gives us 16 x, so you can see, there's often many different ways in which we can solve the same problem. And whatever method you prefer, that's the one we take.